In this commentary, political prisoner Mumia Abu-Jamal considers what's happening in Kenya. The madness called home, Kenya. The continuing carnage in Kenya, East Africa, evokes feelings of confusion mixed with shame. Confusion because if the cause of such infernal conflict is tribalism, the word has little meaning for U.S. blacks, for the grandchildren of slaves were detribalized, or perhaps more accurately compressed into a single national tribe of blackness. Shame because blacks still feel a kinship for an idealized Africa, and thus their calamities seem like ours. And since the relatively recent end of colonialism, many African countries have had more than their share of calamities. Kenyan human rights activist and writer, Kwegi Wa Wamwere, in his 2003 book, Negative Ethnicity, records a harrowing event in 1998 Kenya when a man named John Mwangi detailed what happened to him in the Nakaro district of Kenya. I'm down, and around me, a big fire rages. Our village is razed and destroyed. There are screams everywhere. They are hurt and down. I inhale smoke and smell burning flesh, food, and timber everywhere. I see a man coming with a flaming torch for burning houses and food stores, a spear to stab my heart and sword to slit my throat and kill me as they have others. I think it is the end, but not yet. Please don't kill me, I plead, with whatever breath I have left. We are Africans. We are brothers. Without looking at me, he thrusts the spear into my side and cuts my throat. Die, die, you dirty louse, he says. I'm not your brother. I am not your tribe. Tasting blood in my mouth, I slide into unconsciousness, with that word ringing, tribe, tribe, until the world falls silent. When I wake up, I'm in the hospital, wrapped in bandages from head to foot. A good Samaritan picked me up and brought me here. Several months later, I go to my village, but it is no more. When I look where my house stood, there is another on the land that is no longer mine. Both the new house and the land now belong to him who tried to kill me. Because I am from another ethnic community, I am evicted from my home and land and cleansed from the Rift Valley province, where anyone who is not Kalinjin is called a foreigner. I cry and ask why. No one answers. Although the U.S. press has reported that the present tribal warfare was unprecedented in modern Kenya. In fact, such clashes happened as recent as a decade ago, 1998, and nearly a decade before that, in 92. Such clashes are usually manipulated by political leaders for communal, read tribal support for a ruthless struggle for resources, cattle, and yes, Lebensraum, German for living room. Wamwari put it pointedly when he recounted a quasi-joking between he and some other Kikuyu and Kalinjin friends. They joked about Kalinjin getting the best jobs, the best spots in school, or bank loans. The Kalinjin would retort, Now is our time to eat. You Kikuyu had yours. For Wamweri, tribalism, or in his term, negative ethnicity, has been a powerful tool used by politicians to communicate the notion of it's our time to eat. Wamweri tells a classic and chilling tale of when Jomo Kenyatta came to power after colonialism, and his government slew one of its own ministers, Tom Inboya, a prominent Luo politician. Luo riots shook Nairobi and Kisumu. Wamweri recalls how Kenyatta responded by forcing Kikuyus to take a loyalty oath. Those who didn't take it were beaten or killed. Wamweri explained that he too took the oath, partly in fear and partly in fascination. This oath was against the Luos. This took place in 1969. The notion of nation is a transient one, for nations come and go, tribes remain. So politicians run on the implicit promise that if you elect me, we will eat. And while tribe fights tribe over crumbs, the whole socioeconomic order serves to send the fat of the land into the kitchens and coffers of Europe and America, while politicians ship their excess wealth to Western banks to hold. For what are these countries but Western creations with borders designed to preserve corrupt economic relations where the continent becomes a vast plantation with black overseers who manage black workers for Western profits and exploitation? 
While millions of Africans suffer from malnutrition, millions of Americans and Europeans spend billions to try to manage their rampant obesity. Tribalism? Negative ethnicity? Or poor people fighting for scraps? From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio.